السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولدین حاجر و اخرج من دیارہم و اوزو فی سبیلی و قاتلو و کتلو لو کفرن عنہم سیاتہم ولا ادخلنہم جنات تجری من تحت الانہار ثواب من عند اللہ واللہ عنده حسن الثواب والمیت اللہ تعالی ریمائنز اس ان دا قرآن سو دوز ہو مائگریٹڈ و دربن آؤٹ آف در ہومز ہو سفرد ان مائی کوز ہو فوٹ ان و سلین ای ویل موس سرٹنلی بلوٹ آؤٹ فرم دیم دے انیکوٹیز and I will enter them into jannat and gardens beneath which rivers flow. Thawab min indillah. This is a reward from Allah. Wallahu indahu husna thawab. And Allah is the best of reward. Meaning what Allah is the best of reward. In this verse in Surah Ala Imran, Almighty Allah Ta'ala praises the muhajirun. Allah praises those who migrated from Mecca to Medina and even gives them the glad tidings of Jannah. Yes, indeed, there was hardships, there was pain, there was trials, there was test, and they all had, and they had bore this only for the sake of Almighty Allah Ta'ala. And indeed, when we think about the month of Muharram, it is these verses that we should also connect ourselves with, given that the month of Muharram is significant as our calendar, Islamic calendar, is based not on any other great event, not even on the miraculous journey of the Prophet ﷺ, where he was taken up to the seven heavens, but our Islamic calendar begins with the hijrah and migration of the Prophet ﷺ from Mecca to Medina. So now when we see and we think about the month of Muharram, think about those Sahaba and those companions who left Mecca because in Mecca there was persecution, because in Mecca there was oppression, because in Mecca at that time Prophet ﷺ is there for 13 years after he became a prophet of Allah at the age of 40, from the age of 40, for the first 13 years, he وسلم, is in Mecca. The condition became so unbearable. And finally, when the order came that this permission has been granted to make that hijrah and migration, yes, indeed, the prophet وسلم, with him, his close friend, companion, إِذْ قَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا Almighty Allah Ta'ala makes reference to his sahib, his companion Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه who spent those three days in the cave. Even at that moment and time when he was in the cave and the Prophet ﷺ's head was resting on the lap of Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه and he was birthed, you know, by a poisonous insect or was it a scorpion or a snake? Allah knows best, but the tears fell onto the face of the Prophet وسلم, and that is how the Prophet وسلم, knew that he was bitten. Yes, that is the love that he had for the Prophet وسلم, not to disturb the Prophet. He did not even move, but that pain was so severe that the tears fell onto the face of the Prophet وسلم, and he placed his saliva on the part that he, where he was bitten and then he was cured. But this is the reminder that there are verses which speak about the muhajirun, which include the likes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu anhu and Uthman radiallahu anhu. These were the rightly guided successors, the khulafa, the uh, end. Now when you, uh, time, now in Medina, you have the Ansar. Almighty Allah Ta'ala speaks about also the Ansar. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُحَاجِرُونَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Ansar are the companions, those that were in Medina. And those who followed them with good. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُونَ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ مَرَضُ عَنْهُ 
Allah is already pleased with them. So if Allah has passed his judgment on the Sahaba and the companions and guaranteed and promised for them Jannah, then we had in the 11th year after Hijrah, the passing away of the Prophet wasallam, that was indeed the darkest day for the Sahaba and the companions that Abu Bakr radiallahu anh had to remind them of the verse of the Holy Quran and also added by saying, Man kan ya abudu Muhammadin faqad mata wa man kan ya abudu Allah fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut whomsoever is worshipping the Muhammad he has passed away whomsoever is worshipping Allah know that Allah is alive and never dies so and then the verse of the Holy Quran was uh, recited wa ma Muhammadun illa rasul so Muhammad is only a messenger, and messengers have passed away before. If he dies or he is killed, will you turn your heels away? Whomsoever is going to turn his heels away, turn his back away, he will not in the least cause harm to Allah. So now you have the 13 years in Mecca, you have the 10 years in Medina, you have the passing away of the Prophet As the years go by, we know from the family of the Prophet Sallallahu his beloved grandson, 50 years after the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu on the tent of Muharram, 61 year after Hijrah, Hussein Radiallahu Anhu was shaheed on the plains of Karbala. So this is an important lesson that we should draw, especially when the matter of Muharram sets in because Muharram was already significant. We understand why we fast Yom Ashura. So therefore we say that when a person is passes away or is shaheed, like if somebody dies on a Friday, we say what a day he, ha he died. When somebody passes away on the day of Arafah, we said look at how a great day he had passed away because the day is already great. Similarly, it is like one of the merits and of Hussein radiallahu anhu that Allah chose for him that he was shaheed on the tent of Muharram. Therefore, understand that if we look at the timeline 50 years after the Prophet وسلم, passed away, his beloved grandson was shaheed on the tent of Muharram. Therefore, we do not have any instruction from the Prophet وسلم, in his lifetime that if there is the passing away or any one of, like Hamza radiallahu anhu, we, there is no instruction, you know, that we should cry and lament and wail and tear our garments. لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ ضَرَبَ الْخُدُودِ وَشَقَّ الْجِيُوبَ دَعَى بِدَعْوَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ They are not from amongst us, those who tear their garments, those who make the wail and the crying and lamenting loudly and wailing. So when somebody passes away and is shaheed, then we do not wail and cry and lament and tear our garments. We do not strike ourselves. We do not inflict pain on our body. This body itself is an amana. So understand that this is how we take our deen in the lifetime of the Prophet Wasallam. He is great uncle Hamza radiallahu was shaheed in Uhud in the third year after Hijrah and that is why when it comes to the month of Muharram from the teaching of Ahlul Sunnah is that we do not cry and lament and wail but there is no doubt that the day that Hussein radiallahu anhu was martyred it is very sad it is very tragic but remember at the same time it's important to know that why, and, and to question, why was he abandoned? Why was he deserted? What had happened? Why did he go to Kufa? Why did he leave Makkah? When the letters were coming and letters were sent to the house of Ab uh, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, where Hussein radiallahu anhu was uh, staying, at one day we read that about 600 letters were sent giving allegiance and bay'ah and support Muslim, Hussein radiallahu anhu sent his cousin Muslim ibn Aqil who went all the way to Kufa and uh, when in Kufa to keep it brief he was sh uh, shaheed on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah that is on Yom Arafah 
So, but Hussain Radiallahu was not aware that his cousin also was shaheed and killed there in Kufa. But he set out with his family and close family members and his children and you know, all the way around 71 in number. Finally, the day came, it was on the 10th of Muharram on the plains of Karbala. At that time, there was the discussion that after Muawiyah radiallahu anhu had passed away, who was to be the Amir, who was to be the next Khalif. And that is where the discussion, the way the people in Kufa, uh, when there were those who were not happy that, uh, uh, with the decision of Yazid ibn Muawiyah to be their Amir and leader, and hence the alleged letters were been sent that we are giving Hussein, you are the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you are more de befitting or deserving of this position. And he went all the way, he left Makkah where there was security and his travels and made that journey. And finally, we learn also that at that time there was uh, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad who he was sent to replace Nu'man ibn Bashir and uh, finally the day came where Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad who was ruthless when he sent Umar ibn Sa'ad who were on the way to fight the Dalamites and directed them to go with 4,000 men on, uh, on the tent of Muharram and it was on that day that sadly we learn that all those who had given their support, all those who had given their bi'ah and their allegiance and the numbers increased to over 18,000 supporters who gave their allegiance and bi'ah to Muslim ibn Aqil uh, for Hussein radiallahu anhu that he will be the, the uh, that they will give bi'ah and allegiance to him. The question we should ask ourselves, why when he was there and the people in Kufa at that time, why did they abandon and desert the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So that is the context of what we should reflect upon of those who had abandoned, that a ca time came four years after the, uh, the incident and what happened on Ashura. Uh, though it, there were those who wanted to wreak vengeance on uh, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, meaning whatever happened, they came and they wanted to now do something about it. And when they reached the plains of Karbala, they became known as the Tawabun and those who were repenting. And they started hitting and striking and beating themselves. And that is where we get this practice of uh, the striking, and this is obviously not part of the teaching of the Ahli Sunnah. So let's for a moment think and point out that we are in this month of Muharram, and the day of Ashura is such a great uh, day. It is a day where the Prophet ﷺ gave us the reminder that if you fast, then one year of your previous sins are forgiven, and so we preceded by a day, and uh, or a day after. And at the same time, as we would love to uh, think and speak about the importance of, uh, I mean, uh, we just need to put it in its context that Hussein radiallahu anhu, Allah ta'ala chose for him to be martyred on the day which was already great. And that happened 50 years after the demise and passing away of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. May Almighty Allah ta'ala give us understanding that when also we reflect upon death and why we visit the grave. What is the purpose behind visiting any grave? I was a student there in Cairo. I studied there in the years 1992 to 1994. And while there in Egypt, in Misr, in Cairo, I used to visit the Masjid Hussein. And I remember during my days and uh, you know, I, I'd seen with my eyes that from the opinion, which uh, obviously is just an opinion, they say that the head of Hussein radiallahu anhu is there in the, uh, the Masjid Hussein, which is a masjid directly in another uh, opposite the Azhar Masjid Azhar, where Azhar University is. But what I found that there are many who go and visit and go to the grave, and they actually, while you know it is a Friday and it's a day of Juma, there were those who had. Uh, more attachment and connection to the head or uh, meaning or the grave of where it is a, cl a claim Hussein radiallahu anhu uh, lies buried and uh, they would say and use the words Ya Hussein Madad. So point is whenever there is pain, difficulty, 
purpose of visiting the grave is not to go and start making, asking for the one that had passed away. It is turning to Almighty Allah Ta'ala and asking for Almighty Allah Ta'ala because just like how Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu reminded the companions that whomsoever is worshipping Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam know that he had passed away. Whomsoever is worshipping Allah know that Allah is hayyun la yamut. So, so the purpose of visiting the grave, it reminds us of the akhirah. And that is why we, فَإِنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُكُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكُ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So Almighty Allah Ta'ala reminds us in Surah Al-Mulk, though that is, everything is in the hands of Almighty Allah Ta'ala. He has created mort and He has created hayat. While we are living here, a time will come where Malakal al-Mawt will, will take our soul away. And then after mort, which is mentioned before hayat, that life is forever and forever. It is a life of eternity. So our every day as we are in this month of Muharram, a new year, and the average age of, the um, of my ummah, a'amaru ummati, Baina sitin or sabin. My um, uh, the age of my ummah is between sixty and seventy. So is it not when we see that another year has come to an end, and we welcome a new Islamic year, and in this year there is a very special favor of, of Allah upon the believers because our lifespan is so short. We have so many opportunities. Month of Ramadan came. And you looked and you searched for the night of Laylatul Qadr because you knew it is better than a thousand months. And then you had the month of Shawwal, you had your six fasts in the month of Shawwal. Then you entered into the month of Zul Qa'da and Zul Hijjah and you knew that these are all months of Ashurul Hurum, sanctified months. But in every month there are three days which are known as the white fast. Then you have the Mondays and the Thursdays which is also from the Sunnah. Then you have now this month of, uh, on the month of Zul Hijjah, you had the first 10 days, nine days of fasting of Zul Hijjah. And now you had uh, month of, and those who set out on the journey of Hajj. And now that we are in the month of Muharram, the best of fast after the month of Ramadan is the month of Allah, month of Muharram. And now that we will be uh, on the 10th of Muharram, uh, you know, well, those who will be keeping the fast, and fasting the two days for Yom Ashura of, and fasting a day before and after because we want our sins to be forgiven. So everything, you know, Allah wants the servant to turn to him, not to despair from the mercy of Allah. Never to despair. لا تقنط من رحمة الله That if you fast on Yom Ashura, on the tent of Muharram, then one year of previous sins will be forgiven. And we know that we all have committed so much of sins. Sins are committed with our eyes, with our ears, with our tongue, with our stomach. You know, the sins are committed. So many sins we are carrying. But if Almighty Allah Ta'ala gives us these very special moments and days that we sacrifice, we know that look at the pain of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, see what great sacrifice they had made. Today, we're only doing little bit sacrifice is that we are just making adjustments with our meals. We have our pre-dawn meal and then we break our fast and the day is gone and it will be recorded that on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, whatever action you've done in this dunya, you will see it on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرَ يَرَى Whomsoever does a good deed, the size of an atom, he will see it. Whomsoever does an evil deed, the size of an atom, he will see it. So just like how when the Prophet ﷺ moved away from zulm and tyranny and oppression and pain and suffering, similarly, if we want to connect ourselves, yes, what had happened on the, and the tragedy of the incident in Karbala, which happened 50 years after the passing away of the Prophet ﷺ, on the plains of Karbala in Iraq in the 61 year after Hijrah, then 
you can remind ourselves that there are people and places like the Uyghur Muslims in East Turkestan. They need our du'as and they need our prayers. There are those who are creating mischief and facade in the land. When Fir'aun, when he behaved with so much of arrogance and he created facade and mischief in the land, and uh, Musa a.s. was saved from Fir'aun and his army, then we should again think about those who are committing zulm and tyranny and oppression. So when we are keeping that fast, keep that in mind that Almighty Allah Ta'ala, He may put so many a believers to a test, such great test in this dunya, so much of hardship and pain and difficulty. But on that day of Yawm al Qiyamah, just like how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum had been guaranteed and promised a Jannah, Jannah we will definitely enter them. This is the guarantee that they will enter Jannat and gardens beneath which rivers flow. And if Almighty Allah Ta'ala has given that guarantee to the companions and uh, the muhajirun, those that were driven out of their homes, and here we are, 1444, so many places, so many parts of the world, how there is the zulm and the oppression and the tyranny. It still continues. There are those who are creating mischief and they are spilling the blood. And when the blood of the believer, when there is no honor and dignity, when a people are treated worse than the animals, we should use this important day as a day where we connect ourselves with how Almighty Allah Ta'ala saved Musa alayhi salam from Fir'aun and his army. And if Fir'aun behaved arrogant in the land, and if Fir'aun ordered the killing of those boys and sons that were born, yet Almighty Allah Ta'ala in the very household of Fir'aun saved and gave protection and shelter to Musa alayhi salam. So Almighty Allah Ta'ala, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهُ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ He knows, he knows those zalimun and those who are committing the zulm and the tyranny and the oppression. They are given this respite for a day where eyes will be made to stare in horror. How many a people, how many a leaders, how many a tyrannical rulers, when it is said to them, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Do not create facade and mischief in the land. What do they say? قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ That is as if though they are trying to bring about peace and trying, even though they are committing the zulm and oppression and tyranny and they have been informed and said that how are you creating this facade and corruption and mischief in the land? But this is how they respond. That we are muslihun. That we are undermining and we are committing and we are incarcerating so many people who are languishing in those prisons. All because we are muslihun. As if though they are creating peace in the lands. Allah innahum humul mufsidun walakin la yash'urun. But the reality and the, of the matter is, they are the ones who are, have created this mufsid. They are the ones who created this facade. They are the ones who have created this corruption. And that is how we witness and we see happening in so many parts of the world. That those who are perpetrating and committing these crimes, they get away. Those who are committing oppression, but then we see how Look at those who are the victims and those who are the oppressors. See how things and how the media portrays these matters. Let's pray and let's make dua that Almighty Allah Ta'ala help all those who are helping the deen of Allah. In Tansurullah in Surkum, let's also never despair from the mercy of Allah. If it means that we also create awareness about the plight of those who are suffering in many parts of the world, 
whether they are living in India, whether they are living in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in Burma, in Kashmir, in Yemen, in many parts of the world, in East Turkestan, wherever the, the, there is zulm and oppression, this is what Muharram, after the Hujjaj have returned, after they stood on the plains of Arafat, after they received it, a message from the Prophet وسلم, after the reminder of the importance of the Ummah and the unity of the Ummah, it really lies in our belief, in our attachment in connection with one creator, with one sustainer, with one nourisher. مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم وتعاتفهم كمثل الجسد إذا اشتكى منه عدون تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسحر والحمى. That the likeness and the parable of all of the believers in their love for each another, in the mercy that they show for each another, in the compassion that they have for each another is like one body. If there is pain in one part of the body, the rest of the body will feel that restlessness will be in a state of fever. So yes, indeed, just like how we take our deen and examples from those illustrious companions, the khulafa and lot the subbu ashabi, the Prophet وسلم, made it very clear, do not even swear or curse any one of my companions. You know, if anyone even has to do anything or even spend, they will not even reach any one of the any one of those status of the companions. They will not even reach their level. So, most important reminder is, and to summarize and to end this message is yes, indeed, the new year has begun. Most important, value our time. Another year of our life is gone. The whole month of Muharram is a special. It is from the Ashur al -Hurum. In this month of Muharram, there is a day known as Ashura, that is the tent of Muharram. And just like how Ashura is the day where if you fast, it expiates one year of previous sins, fast on the day, day before also or day after. And connect this month of Muharram with the lesson that you can take of the hijrah and migration of the Prophet ﷺ from Makkah to Medina and understand the position and the status because of this very same hijrah and migration, Almighty Allah Ta'ala revealed verses praising those muhajirun and the ansar in the Quran and guaranteeing and giving the guarantee and promise that they will be receiving and a, a, a Jannah that is guaranteed for the Sahaba and companions and Allah is pleased with them. And similarly, just like how this month is significant as a beginning of our new Islamic year and the time is passing by so very fast, let's also understand that the Prophet وسلم, he is our real example. And if he lived 10 years in Medina, we had the passing away of the likes of Hamza radiallahu anhu, say the shuhada ahlil jannah, but Islam teaches us that whenever anyone passes away, that in itself is a test. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give glad tidings to those who are patient. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً Those whom any musiba when the test comes, and what do they say? إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And that is how we should understand the martyrdom of Hussein radiallahu anhu in the 61 year after Hijrah, 50 years after the passing away of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. A very great test, but indeed an honor and status given to Hussein radiallahu anhu that he was shaheed on a day which was already great and sanctified, the tent of Muharram. May Almighty Allah Ta'ala forgive us for all of our shortcomings. May Almighty Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq strength to make that preparations for our journey into the Akhirah. And as the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes, Al-Kayyasu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al-mawt. 
And intelligent is that person who controls his nafs and his desires, and he does those actions that will benefit him after the life of this world. Until my next reflection, Jazakumullah khairan, Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.